Hello accounts people, time to have a look at purchase ledger control accounts, PLCAs or sometimes called trade payables. So we've got one here that we're going to complete and then we'll reconcile it later with the individual suppliers accounts. So we've got accounts that already have balances in them and we've also got an opening balance on our trade payables account which means that we owe our suppliers £1,000 at the start of the month. It is of course only for credit purchases, partner double entry, credit entries, debit entries and vice versa, debit entries, credit entries. Uh, totals include VAT, so they're gross or inclusive. Uh, a liability, well that's why it's a credit entry, we owe money to our suppliers normally, it's easy to understand then why sales ledger control account is a debit. It represents the amount of money that we owe to and therefore will pay suppliers in the near future and it will reconcile with the total of the individual supplier accounts as long as we've got everything correct. So on with it then, so we're going to have a month, so we're at the start of April, some of the figures are already put in there and by the end of the month, so this would be from Day books are posted from day books separately. Purchase day book, double entered into the purchase ledger control account. We'll have another thousand pound worth of purchases, but of course, that's net of VAT, so we can reclaim the VAT back that we have to pay our suppliers. appropriate description, assuming it's just 20%, £200 VAT, so two debit entries, now the credit entries, balancing off, so we have our suppliers, £1,200 more, £1,000 plus VAT. Purchase returns then, so if we send something back, so purchase return day book, uh, not as much this month then, so just £50, but again that's net, so that's a credit entry. just 20% again. So two credit entries, so this reduces how much we owe our suppliers because we're sending them something back. Appropriate description, just the £60 that will reduce when we balance it off. Also, what would reduce the amount that we owe our suppliers? Well, if we'd paid somebody quickly, but we haven't paid anybody yet, so we'll pay them some money. We'll pay a thousand. Credit the bank for payment. Bank, cash book payments, um, or just a suppliers column in the analysis columns. Either way, it's still a thousand, and of course, it re it's the opening balance, it's reducing the amount of money that we owe our suppliers. So, assuming some of those payments were quick enough to pay. Our suppliers and get a discount. So purchase ledger control account is a double entry. Cash book payment is the origin. We might get ten quid off. That isn't it though. So we need another entry in our VAT column.
That's the two pounds. That on the ten pounds. Credit entries, debit entries. Try getting the spelling the C's right. That's better. So that reduces the amount. So we bought some more goods, we've returned some goods, we've got a discount off and we've made a payment. The only other item we're going to put in is a refund from our suppliers because actually one of our suppliers owed us some money, we don't want to buy off them again, so we're not happy with a credit note. Well, if a supplier is sending us some money, it's money coming in. Say hundred or we'll see in a minute is actually the amount of uh, supply number four. So debit the bank because it's money coming in. So it doesn't quite follow the logic. We'll put in a couple of entries in the control account afterwards. We've got a side by side comparison. So debit the bank must be credit the control account. So there's our balance. So now what we need to do is balance it off. So 2,500 minus the total. There we are, 1,428. So 1,428 is how much we owe our suppliers at the end of the month. So now let's reconcile that with the individual accounts. You can see we've got the 1428 in there. We can now actually see where the opening balance of a thousand came from. It was 200 pound plus 500 plus 600 minus the 300. That's the supplier that's had to give us a refund, the 300 pounds uh, that's come into the bank. So we'd better put some amounts in. So the purchases first. So we bought £1,000 or £1,200 gross, we'll split it evenly. Of course the day books would show us and these would be listed in the supplier's account as individual amounts. So if this was one of 10 invoices, we'd actually have all 10 invoices with all the details for the invoices listed but at the moment we'll just put that one in so that's one of the f items so notice it's going the same side as the control accounts again much more details belong in the account so that's our purchases dealt with so our purchase returns then we just had 60 pound worth of purchase returns and we'll just take it off one supplier's account just for simplicity again far more details in an account if this is multiple invoices each one would be listed separately and of course we'd, we'd expect to see a, a purchase number and an invoice number but either way that's a £60 that is the same side as the purchase returns so we need to do the payments to the supplier so we actually paid £1000 to our suppliers uh, again the cash book would add more details bank payments and the control account and we'll maybe pay that one the opening balance so that's 200 
or cut in fact cash book payments sometimes might be a better definition or purchase the control account is the double entry well not the double entry but the where we can find it so that's 700 of our money which meant supplier so he could have only had say 100 1,000 pay to suppliers, 200, 500, 300. Of course, we would have more precise details in our cash book exactly which supplier got which amount of money. So, credit the bank, debit not only the purchase later control account but also the individual suppliers' accounts. And then the discounts received, so £12 discounts received, we'll just stick it in supplier 2. For simplicity again, we would obviously maybe put that against several payments. So we've done that one, done that one, done that one. What we haven't done then is process the refund. So the refund, debit the bank, money coming in, debit the control account and also debit the suppliers account, or credit the suppliers account. So the same way around as the control account. which of course means that account has no balancing to do so that account will be zero that'll make the maths easy so now if we balance these off we've done everything we're supposed to have everything we know about Balance carried down should be 400, and there we are, it's appearing in our reconciliation list. Three to eight appearing in our reconciliation list. We are 700 and we've now reconciled it so the total of our individual four suppliers adds up to our controlled account which means we're quite happy that an awful lot of our accounts is correct uh, so just to remind you yet yeah, they included VAT the entries corresponded all the way through the suppliers and the control account are the same side uh, suppliers of course should have every individual invoice every individual credit note everything listed separate separately whereas the control account is the totals off the day books uh, so they're not part of the double entry although they're the same side uh, yes on the computer system we know um, it's almost impossible or very difficult but it does happen where these two don't balance off it's more for a manual exercise uh, but actually if, again we could keep a manual purchase ledger control account and compare it with our computer system and then look at the individual ones if it was going wrong uh, because you've seen a few typos from me, although I corrected them straight away, uh, an extra zero or something would make a big difference. Uh, compared with the sales data control account, though, at least on this version, you can rely on your suppliers telling you reasonably accurately how much you owe them. Whereas the sales data control account, you miss an invoice off, you may never see the money. So, you know, a little bit less important because we have an alternative source of information just to double check everything against with our delivery notes as well, all the other paperwork. So on this one then, so it's a liability account. Anything on the credit side increases, anything on the debit side decreases, both control accounts and suppliers the same way around so if there was an error and you're trying to work out what the effects are well if I missed something off on the increased side so I forgot to put that £300 it would actually decrease the balance on the control account 
so the control account would be less than the purchase ledger accounts likewise if I missed say the discounts received off my purchase ledger control account would balance out at, in this case 1440 so forget something that reduces it increases the account has the opposite effect and the same on this way around if we missed off the discount off supplier 2 it would look like we owed supplier to £12 more and the same on any of these if we missed an invoice off on the increase side it decreases the balance that we owe our supplier it's an invoice if we've missed it off it looks like we owe them less money fairly logical that one if we put something else in on the same side it does what it says on the side so if we put an extra refund in or we put an extra purchases in it would increase the control account or the suppliers accounts respectively depending on where the error was and if we put something extra in on the decrease side maybe we doubled up on the discounts received or the purchase returns that would actually decrease the balances whether it's the control account or the suppliers account so let's have a look then side by side so that's our sales ledger control account that we did earlier so the only couple of items I've added into it is a return payment so we put the refund in uh, this would be where a check has bounced on us or a payment because direct debits and box payments can bounce on you as well uh, but I've also put a contra so a contra is between the sales ledger and a control account so if we actually get this account in and put it next to or maybe even just on, underneath uh, sales ledger control account you can see the two next to each other uh, but actually this contra that's where a supplier is also a customer or it's a three party way there are lots of businesses lots of industries where people do a lot of work for each other building industry printing industry or it might be somebody says we can't pay you because we're owed money by another company and maybe the other company pays you directly uh, with or without the, the court's involvement so the double entry for this set off and it has to be in the journals would be in our purchase ledger control account it has reduced the amount that we owed by our customers it will reduce the amount that we owe our suppliers So if we put the 200 in, that now needs to go to 1228 to balance off, reduces the amount that we owe our suppliers the same as it reduced the amount that we owe or were owed by our customers. The return payments increases, hopefully we're not going to bounce anything on our suppliers.